Today it's raining. There is a big thunder outside all day long. So I decided to make this video. Uh, in this video, we're going to take a look at Digital Photo Professional 4 by Canon. DPP4 or Digital Professional 4 is the best photo editing software for any Canon file period. Yes, you can argue against it or not. But to me, if you want to get the most out of your Canon RAW file, this is it. Yep. I'm not talking about the performance. I'm not talking about the flexibility or user interface. I'm talking about color, noise, and sharpness. In this category, this software wins. Lightroom is for those who want convenience or convenience and quality at the same time. But I have tried many other software in my past. Uh, SilkyFix Developer Studio Pro it comes next to Digital Photo Professional. Anyway, so in this video, I'm going to take you through how the software works uh, from the beginning to the end, and you'll be surprised how good the software it is and how much tool it has. And this is really, really a very good yet underrated software. First of all, in order to bring in your raw file, all you have to do go to the left hand side and navigate to the folder uh, where your photographs are now uh, one thing to remember that i'm going to close this one off so that you can have some more room that every time you do an edit and then it saves directly into the raw file this is how the interface looks like as you can clearly see on the top hand side you have the traditional clicks and buttons file you can bring in things and bring out you can do batch process you have convert and save edit view thumbnail i'm going to show you the one that i mostly go which is the view first of all because in the view you can turn on the navigator folder which is sometimes very important if you're zooming in to certain things and you can just bring in like that it's very convenient i like it but normally if i don't use it i turn it off now followed by histogram palette so either you can turn off the histogram palette it turns off the whole thing completely or you can turn this one on going back to the view and then turn on where is it the histogram palette there you go boom now quick check quick check is basically a preview mode i mean it, it's very useful when you have multiple photos and you want to skim through and you can do your deletes and uh, picking photos and etc now i'm gonna go to the edit image which is we are already there at the bottom of the photograph you have the traditional buttons you can do one on one zoom uh, if you want to you can click on the photos to go back you have the percentage you can zoom in zoom out using the plus minus button you can compare side by side you can compare side by side with another photograph you have multiple you can turn on the grid you have different grid option uh, how many grid would you like normally if i really want to use grid i stick with uh, the basic ones uh, 256 but in this case i believe i'm gonna turn this one off because i don't need it now this one here af focus point which means that it actually shows where the fo uh, the photograph was focused as you can clearly see it's focused on the sky but because it's taken on if i click the i button it's taken on f11 so pretty much everything is in focus so it wasn't really concerning um so yeah again if you, you click i you can clearly see the basic details of uh, the exit file of your photograph i'm normally turn it off if i don't need it to be honest with you now here's the cool part here which is um, i'm not going to show you as an example i'm going to show you that it exists you can do composite meaning that you can do blending you don't need to go to photoshop you can just do the composite here you can do hdr of course you uh, i i believe that you know what hdr means so you can directly do your hdr compositing tool here uh, dual pixel raw optimizer so if you have a canon camera with a dual pixel raw you can use the software using canon dpp show raw burst image tool as well you have the focus stacking which is amazing i mean it's unbelievable that this free software provides um, options for focus stacking and start raw movie tool so again if you have a camera canon and it shoots raw you can bring your videos here to do your work you can have that also you have direct transfer to photoshop tool again convenient everything else i don't really touch it you only thing is that i turn on sometime highlight and shadow warning uh display setting which means that i make sure that my black is not touching zero and my white is not touching 255 it's somewhere in between in the safe zone you can clearly see that by the histogram it's pretty well exposed i'm pretty happy about it so i'm gonna close the sidebar again i don't need it and uh, you have the other button the windows uh tools i already showed you the tools 
you have the cloud processing i don't know what it is i never actually bothered to know because i never needed one period now at the bottom you can see where the shadow and highlight is clipping i mean i'm not really concerned it's not really clipping nothing is clipping here on the other hand my highlight is spot on which is amazing now let's get into the fun part so on the right hand side you have pretty straightforward tool one thing i bothers me though if i scroll down like that i would love to see my histogram so normally i go to that tool and then i can right click and select dock or float so that's what i particularly like to see although it's kind of again bothers me because it's taking away some space of my of my photograph so yeah i mean would have been better if i could just have the histogram always on without touching my photograph maybe i could just make it bigger the sidebar so that i can have the my histogram available maybe i can do like that anyway so moving on now you have the tab so you have the first basic image adjustment tab where you have all kind of white balance to the contrast to shadow highlight you name it you have it white balance i'm not going to go into the white balance uh, tool because come on i mean i think that you know that already what it does but what i'm going to show you how it works like you have the dropper so you can drop wherever if you think the pure gray or white available you can drop it on and then see if it's working for you in this case i'm um, pure gray is the sky so i think it's working so i'm gonna reset it i'm not gonna do it because i think you know that already so i had the auto ambience priority and the auto white priority so ambience is more like global brightness where the white priority it's making sure that if you have a white it makes sure the white is pure white that's it so i'm going to turn off the warning so that the photo doesn't look very ugly and then you have the brightness look brightness do not compare brightness with exposure let me show you something so i'm going to add some brightness here so if i add some brightness if you clearly see that it's only moving the middle in the histogram to the right and if i reduce brightness it's moving mostly the middle part squishing to the left so what that means because okay i'm not speaking english so i'm going to speak english the brightness is the mid-tone or high mid-tone so it tries its best to reduce or add brightness without affecting your bright 255 or zero meaning that you should be safe even if you're adding brightness or reducing brightness when it comes to shadow clipping or highlight clipping pretty amazing right now you have the white balance fine tune by the way you can register each of the each of the edit meaning that let's say you change some white balance you can click register in the white balance and then save it in one two three for the future photograph if you have multiple photos from the same location in the same area of course you have the preset you have the color temperature you can manually add color temperature obviously which is another thing that i really like to see uh, i'm going to reset this again and of course you have the fine tune which is pretty similar to canon fine tune uh, white balance color shift uh, if you are familiar with the canon menu uh, i'm pretty sure that you have seen that in your photograph now while i took the photo i turned on the auto wide optimizer in my camera so it registered in my raw file so automatically it added auto light optimizer which is basically a bit of a, a high dynamic range boost i'm going to turn this on up to show you without it and with it and i'm going to show you low standard and high pretty cool right so good thing is that it doesn't really go crazy on this tool i mean uh, it's pretty moderate change now you have the picture style obviously if because you shot raw i shot raw i have all the access to all the canon's beautiful picture for profiles my favorite is uh, faithful because it's natural but because it's a cityscape maybe landscape uh, will do a good job because it boosts the red and the blue quite high and makes the photo looks pretty vibrant uh, you have standard as well which is always uh, by default the canon profile auto i don't know but I like, i'm curious about it so yeah you have fine details my another personal picture profile in canon uh, camera in is monochrome actually because the monochrome is particularly contrasty i like it i'm a big fan of it i'm done i'm gonna go to the reset there is one tool i particularly want you to see first of all the gamma adjustment what it does i'm gonna do auto it's going to take some time to process 
So it's kind of making the photo linear, meaning that it's doing a nice job making the photograph looks beautifully well exposed. Look at that. I'm going to show you before and after. The before, the photo was looked like that. And after, the photo going to look like in one second. You see nothing is clipping. The photo looks beautifully well exposed, vibrant. Nothing is clipping. It just, I lo I'm in love. I cannot say another about it. So gamma adjustment is something that I really want you to pay attention because it's a very powerful tool to control your levels. I'm going to show you something else again. So if you slide the middle part to the left or right, you can individually control the midtone. So every time I'm moving that, pay attention to, I'm going to bring on, bring down the histogram right there. Let's check this one out. If I move the, the histogram, middle of the histogram is moving far to the right or opposite while not touching the shadow and the highlight. So you know what is going on here. So you can control just the midtone. So you can do the same thing with the highlight section. For example, if I move the highlight a little bit on the left or on the right, you can clearly see that it's only affecting this part of the of the histogram. That is pretty freaking amazing. I mean, this is the easy version of curve, which we're going to get into that later. Now, I'm going to leave it there. At the bottom, you have, of course, the advanced tool, which is uh, basic contrast, the highlight. And interestingly enough, if you change this back and forth, you can also, again, work individually on shadow and highlight and contrast again which is amazing, like you have extreme amount of control there. And I'm pretty sure that I don't need to explain you the contrast, shadow and highlight. I'm pretty sure you're familiar with that. What I want to explain to you is the color tone. So I'm going to show you an example. I'm going to show you, move it to the left, far left, and see the change. So it's adding a kind of like a nice, beautiful, calming pink tone. While if I go all the way to the left, right, and it's adding a, a kind of like a soft touch of green tone on the highlight and mid-tone area. Nothing aggressive, but you can see the change. It depends on uh, how your photograph is, so you can always add or reduce some color cast from your photograph. Um, saturation, again, this is something that quite obvious. I'm pretty sure that you know that. So I'm going to show you if I add saturation. Good thing about it, if you even go to the extreme part of the saturation, again, and nothing is clipping there. Your photograph looks pretty safe. That's what I'm very happy about. Uh, I'm going to bring back, bring back my histogram. So I'm going to go back to the view and then histogram palette. There you go. So I'm going to pull it on the, on the side so they can see what's going on. So yeah, I, this is, I'm gonna come back in the middle so the saturation stays untouched. Sharpness, again, you either have sharpness mask or unsharp mask or sharpness. This is, again, if you have already taken or set it, uh, your sharpness in camera, it will bring it over directly automatically into the software, which is pretty amazing. So you don't need to, it's not like Lightroom where whatever you do the settings in camera, most likely Adobe going to ignore all of it. Here, it doesn't. Now, you already got an idea how the, this part works, followed by on the top, you have the lens correction. Now, this is freaking amazing, guys. I'm going to tell you why. Are you familiar with the DxO Photo Lab? You have something exactly same as DxO Photo Lab. Let me show you exactly what I mean. So I'm going to bring on this sub window. Again, this sub window things is also pretty amazing because you don't really need to zoom in all the time. You can just use that tool and then show, look at the details. So I'm going to go to the one on one because one and two to me, it looks pretty ugly. Now, if you use a Canon lens, for instance, you have the digital lens optimizer. So, so third, when you're using third party lens, unfortunately, you cannot use the digital lens optimizer. optimizer. What I'm doing right now, if you use a Canon lens and don't have registered inside the computer or software, you can go to that uh, refresh button and it will bring up the list of Canon lenses, whichever it supports. In this case, I'm using a 70 to 200 F4IS version 2. It's done. And now, let me show you the magic. Check, keep an eye on this little box. If I do a tick right now, 
and then wait a little bit because it's working on progress. Okay, did you see that? It literally fixed all the lens flow automatically. I'm going to show you again because this is amazing. I'm a big fan of this one. So I'm going to turn off and turn on. Are you paying attention? It's also affecting the brightness. Check this one out again. So yeah, I'm keep doing it. I want you to see exactly what's happening. So what is doing exactly? This digital lens optimizer basically means if you even using a Canon kit lens and we all know that the Canon kit lens is not that sharp enough. I mean, it's good, but it's not that professional level. Um, just one click of digital lens optimizer and it will bring so much details just with one click. Then you can add like a hundred to go extreme. Even if you go extreme, it doesn't do any kind of extreme changes did you see that i don't even need to zoom in you can do a global one here and you can see in the little box that it's 100 percent zoom is bringing back a so much sharpness it is unbelievable i'm gonna even go even further so i'm gonna go somewhere in this name see that is the building this is the name that amount of details is just crazy good i'm bragging a lot about it i know but this little one single tool it's uh one of the biggest force of this software so equally as good as dxo 4 f 4 it does exactly the same thing so it brings take away all the flow this is 100 percent zoom and it can read the details every single name without any problem that's something i like about this software particularly for that one. So you have also the lens blur. You can click the lens blur. It tries to fix any kind of lens blur. If it thinks that it have it, you can clearly see the photo looks tack sharp. Uh, peripheral, peripheral illumination is basically fringing. I don't think I have any fringing, so I'm good here. Distortion, if I click it, what it does? So it tries to click the distortion. Of course, Canon knows Canon lenses. So I'm pretty sure that if you click it and it's try to freeze the distortion of that particular lens, I'm pretty sure that that's the correct one. Uh, there is no other software can give you as much guarantee as Canon DPP, period. Now you got the idea of this section. This is the lens correction section. So again, this section is very useful if you're using the native Canon lenses. If you're not using the Canon native Canon lens, like if you're using Tamron or I don't know, uh, um, what is the name, Sigma, for instance, uh, unfortunately you don't have this option. But then again, I like Sigma or Tamron lenses and they're freaking amazing without any correction anyway. So you are good there. And you have the basic crop tool, obviously, um, something that I use quite often. Uh, not much e explanation needed so you have it you have the the um, preset or you have the free like the independent one it takes time did you see that every time I'm going to one top tab to another there's a little circle there so it's taking quite a bit of time to move from one to another because the photograph is taken with Canon 5DSR, which means this file, it's pretty big, really big photo. So I'm going to cut right here and then jump straight to the part when it's ready and done, done loading. I don't know if you can hear my computer in the background. Just to get this area loaded took me about a minute and a half, which is pretty freaking long for... A local adjustment so uh, that's something in convenience that I have to live with if I want to use this software now what it does this area is a local adjustment essentially so you can just set adjustment area you can click it and you have the brush ready so you can select the opacity and you have the traditional brightness contrast hue and saturation which is pretty easy let's for example I'm just gonna click here on the bus like that and it does have a preset ready did you see that so it's automatically adding preset of brightness of 50 so i'm gonna reduce that quite a bit and uh, it can i can change the hue so let's see what it does if i change the hue it's changing red to complete something else for instance or it can ch change the saturation of the bus for instance you can boost it or you can reduce it whatever you want but you got the idea you can do local adjustment but not much though so you have one two three four and five local adjustment which is okay i mean if i really want to do some local adjustment i usually would 
do all my basic conversion here and uh, as many basic uh, change I can do in Canon DPP and then would finish the rest of the photo in Photoshop or Affinity Photo, whatever you have available. I mean, that's the beauty of it. This software will do the best of basics and then you can do the rest in anywhere else you like. Now moving on to remove dust. So this is another good tool. I like it. I mean, this is a very good tool if you want to do some local smart removal. Let's say your photo has very bad amount of dust. You can easily use it. Again, did you say that it's taking forever to load the photograph? So I'm going to cut to the end. I'm going to give you the timestamp how long it took me to load this photo. Again, it took me about more than two minutes to load this page Every, when I was here. It, I had enough time to go and get me a glass of water, drink it and come back to my table. And then I still had to wait about a few seconds until the tab was ready. That's pretty long, I have to say. So if I understand correctly, bigger your file is, uh, longer it takes. Mm, something that I have to think of. So again, at the beginning of the video, I said that this software is phenomenal when it comes to the image quality and the sharpness and noise reduction and color. This one is not the best for performance so far who is where this software lacks it takes forever sometimes to load a photo i'm just using one single photo and it's already taking quite long so something that this software needs to work on i think so you got the idea so this tab it does um like a, you have the little brush and you can select a coffee copy source and you can you know do some local dust removal using that part you can click repair light the repair dark is more for the dark spots so yeah, pretty straightforward, nothing to worry about. Now you also have adjust image detail, which is essentially for noise reduction. So this area, it's all about noise reduction. As you can clearly see that it's added a little bit of noise reduction. It, it brought all the settings back from my camera, which is pretty amazing. You have the curves. So either you can use the RGB curves or you can click luminance and work in individual channel if you like luminance R, G or P. You have the straight or curve. So straight means basically every time you make a change, it's doing, it's doing a cut. Did you see that? It's doing a little cut there. It's not really like a nice end round. Um, if you're using curve, if you're changing it, it's doing a nice and round change. It's not doing a crazy cut, which is amazing. You either can use a dropper or you can do manually here, or you can add input and output and it will change, make a change in the curve. Again, you also have auto light optimizer even here too, which is uh, good to have. I'm not gonna spend too much time on this one. You know curve, I mean, we all know curve. This one is particularly good too. Again, did you see that here you have HSL for each color section. So I'm going to click reset and go down. So you have the navigator at the bottom. Other than that, you have the red, orange, yellow, green, aqua, blue, purple, and magenta, and uh, which is amazing, amazing tool. For instance, the bus is red. You have some red over there too. And you can change the hue of the whole global red channel to something else. You can see the bus is changing. Um, you can use the similar uh, tool, similar color channel for any color inside the photograph. And another important tool in this software. Uh, finally, I'm glad that this tutorial is over. Finally, you can change the workspace. I mean, there is nothing much to it. This is all about. I normally don't play with any other tools other than this one. And then if I want to export, you can either go to file and do batch process, control B, if you have a multiple photograph or you can do convert save. So when you do that, you have a box ready and you can select your folders where you want to export it, then you can change it to TIFF or, um, TIFF or JPEG. Now, when you select JPEG, you can of course select the image quality, the maximum or minimum. You can select TIFF 8-bit or 16-bit you can also do a research if you tick it you can manipulate your uh, picture size and then you can change the name so you can change the name of your photograph easily while you're exporting so i'm not going to export it but you got the idea so yeah this is it i think uh, this video got longer than i imagined only because that the software took a long time at certain point to load 
certain part of the tool so unfortunately the video took longer other than that i hope that you like this video you i hope that you got a basic idea about uh, digital photo professional for now i before i end this video i'd like to say that this software is probably the best software for canon raw file when it comes to sharpness noise reduction color and overall image quality when it comes to performance this is where this software lacks but this is something that i would love to live with as long as i've got a beautiful file i wish you all the best and i see you in the next video take care of yourself bye bye